14 is what we're going to be reading. And it says, in the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a revelation was given to Daniel, who was called Belteshazzar. It, its message was true. It concerned a great war. See, because you young people got to understand right now that it's more young people right now that's being murdered in the streets than ever before. And you need to understand something about your life that Satan wants to take you out and you are in the midst of a war. Mm -hmm. And it says, the understanding of the message came to him in a vision. Lord, have mercy. This ain't even a part of my notes, but, but, but sometimes, you know, when y'all get in school, sometimes you don't even see clearly the thing that you're in the midst of. Mm. And it says, at that time, I, Daniel, mourned for three weeks. I ate no choice food, no meat or wine, touched my lips, and I used no lotion. Turn around, hit your neighbor, say he was ashy. He was ashy. Because y'all, I only, if y'all, if, if I came up here after three weeks with no lotion on, y'all would say he just white. He's just like a powdered donut. He just ashy. But 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 and, and, and it says this, it says. Wait, where I go? On the 24th day of the first month, as I was standing on the bank of the great river, the Tigris, I looked up. And there before me was a man dressed in linen with a belt of fine gold from Euphrates around his waist. His body was like topaz, his face like lightning, his eyes like flaming torches, his arms and legs like the gleam of burnished bronze, and his voice was like the sound of a multitude. And he said, I, Daniel, was the only one who saw the vision. Those who were with me did not see it, but such terror overwhelmed them that they fled and hid themselves. Watch this, I, 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 I'm, I'm kind of teaching as I'm going, but, but it's possible for you to be in the chairs today and be in the presence of God today and one person can have an experience or an encounter with God while the next person does not have the same experience. Turn around and tell somebody, say, I want that experience. And get this, and it says this. So I was left alone gazing at this great vision. I had no strength. I mean, I had no strength It's left. My face turned deathly pale and I was helpless then I heard him speaking and as I listened to him I fell into a deep sleep my face to the ground a touch and a hand touched me and set me trembling on my hands and knees he said Daniel you who are highly esteemed wait The Bible says that he was without strength. He fell, his face and stuff was pale. He hasn't eaten any food, which means that he was actually suffering, right? But the Bible says now, Daniel, you who are highly esteemed, let me speak to some people that's been going through some stuff in your life. And you thought that, 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 that God had forgotten about you and that the enemy was about to take you out. I want you to know that God had orchestrated that from the beginning. And he says that the reason that he allowed you to face that thing is be not because he was mad at you, not because he wanted you to get taken out, but simply because you were highly esteemed. Ah. Uh, 
See, if I begin to preach and talk right now and, and tell Slater that the purpose of his leg getting broken, the reason he had to fall when he was doing that thing was so that we would have a new experience with God when we was worshiping and we saw him walking on the stage after he had dropped his, his cane, then, 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 then he would forget about the pain that he actually faced and he would know that God was using his pain to do something great in the people and he would know that he is highly esteemed. Yeah, I think I might preach a little bit today. Let me see. Okay, and it says this. Consider carefully the words I'm about to speak to you and stand up. For I have now been sent to you. And when he said this to me, I stood up trembling. Then he continued, do not be afraid, Daniel, since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before God, your words were heard. And I have come in response to them. But the prince of Persia, king, the Persian kingdom, resisted me 21 days. Then Michael, one of the chief princes, came to him, came to me because I was detained there with the king of Persia. Now I have come to explain to you what will happen to your people in the future, for the vision concerns a time yet to come. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you right now, God. Thank you, Father, for your presence in this place. Now, God, I ask God in the name of Jesus as I shrink behind the cross that, Father, these young people would have an experience with you based on and a story that is actually embarrassing to me. So, Father, I'll put my embarrassment out there so that they could learn and you can use it for your glory. Every word that I speak that's good, God, you get the praise. Anything that's said that's wrong, God, I take the credit for that. So right now, have your way in your people. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen. So y'all get this. So, 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 so. We've been talking about this intimate relationship with, with, with Jesus and having a, a more intimate relationship with Jesus, that we want to have this new encounter with Jesus. And, 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 and as I began, oh, see, I done stepped out the boundaries of my line already because I'm supposed to be in the middle. I'm about to, I, had, I just, just, see, I just, I made a commitment, but I just, I, I forgot because of, I, I began, but I suppose to stay, so I'm gonna go ahead and stay lined up right now. But 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 so so as we desire to have this more intimate relationship, y'all pray for me because it's really hard for me to stay inside this 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 little circle. Y'all praying? Y'all praying? So y'all praying? Y'all ain't praying over here. Can somebody pray, please, please? Hey yo, you got a tough crowd on that side, Slater. That's that side. Crowd. Hold on, let me ask this side. Y'all praying? Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. That's our little better. I'm have, I might have to preach to y'all today. I'm just gonna talk to y'all. So y'all, guess what happened? So, so you said what happened? Thank y'all. Yep, yeah, no, no. Hold, let me, let me. Let, I'm gonna try this out one more time. Right? Y'all, y'all gonna talk back to me? For you got me. I got two. That's all. The, the Bible said wherever two or three would gather. So I'll take the two. See, I, I, know what it, I know what it is. I need to break it down and be like, girl, you ain't going to believe this. Oh, Slater, I got a girl to smile now. I'm speaking her language now. Girl, you ain't going to believe this. Because back when I was uh, 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 in kindergarten, right, I had this teacher uh, uh, named Miss uh, 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 Belson. And Miss Belson, right, Y'all, Miss Belson, we had this class, and, and y'all, I was really scared to go to kindergarten. I was, I was scared to go in the kindergarten, right? I was, I was really scared, but so I went to kindergarten, and, 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 and something happened to me when I was actually in kindergarten. Y'all remember when y'all was in kindergarten? Y'all, that's been over, wait a minute. Jesus, that's, that's, that's been over 
That's been a long time ago. I, I can't even tell y'all. That's, that's been a long time. That's been a long time ago. But, but something used to happen. Miss Belson used to make us sit in our chairs, right? So we had to sit at our desk. But one of the best times in school for me was when it was time to go to lunch. Is there anybody testimony today that you just love, that you feel a special anointing from God when it's time to go to lunch, that you just... For some people who has, who has been fasting and praying and not eating for the last 21 days, when I start thinking about lunch right now, y'all, I get all excited. See, because when I was downstairs today, y'all, can I tell y'all something that, that, that's a little embarrassing and funny at the same time? I'm downstairs today, y'all. I'm praising God. I'm worshiping. I'm doing everything. Y'all, these skinny jeans start to fall down. I was like, Lord, hope the cameras don't run. Uh, pull me and I had to... And then I was back in the room a uh, few minutes ago before we came out here. My wife had to, you know, she was coaching me while I put another hole in my belt to hold these pants up. Because I get a little excited when I'm having a conversation with y'all sometimes. But what had happened was, is the teacher, Miss Belson, is, 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 she used to line up the class. And, and back in the day, what would happen is, they would, she would say, hey girls, all the girls go to the door first. And the girls would line up first. Right? And then after that, all the, she would tell the guys and she would give us permission. But y'all, it, 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 it was this girl in class. I'm getting nervous. I'm getting nervous. That her name was, y'all, I don't even know, if, to be honest with y'all, I don't even know if this is actually her real name but 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 everybody in class called her piggy 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 now 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 now, now y'all y'all got to understand something uh, about piggy cuz piggy didn't she didn't she didn't she didn't look like me y'all y'all got to understand something about piggy is piggy was a a uh, 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 bright skinned, she, she, she had uh, uh, hazel brown eyes and she had real long hair and, 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 and this was back in the day that, that y'all, 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 can I, can I tell y'all something about, about me? Can I tell y'all this back in 1970, way, hey. <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. Now, 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 I expect, I don't mind everybody else saying something, but I feel some type of way that Slater said something. I don't mind if y'all kids say something, but, but Slater ain't had no reason to open his mouth. Because, you know, me and Slater, sometimes we call, I be like, what up, bro? He be like, what up, bro? What up, bro? And we, we, so, 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 now he, he gonna stop calling me bro. Now I'm on unk fat, uh, status now. I don't appreciate that. I feel disrespected. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but y'all need to know something that, that, that so, so when Miss Belson actually lined us up, right, that, 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 that this young lady, she would tell the girls to go into the cafeteria and we'd be following the girls and she always set the girls on the right hand side of the table and the boys always sat on the left hand side of the table. But then this young girl that was in class, she kind of, the teacher kind of sat at the, the head. It was Miss Belson and it was Miss Nurse was the teacher's aide and 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 and, 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 and Piggy, she sat on the right hand side of the table and I guess, I don't know if it's alphabetical order or what it was doing. She always seemed to sit further from me. But get this, that Piggy used to get up from the table and every single day, she would come to my side of the table and she would make a statement. She would say, Rodney, can I have a cookie? And I would have to give uh, Peggy. She wanted one of my cookies, right? See, because with, with her parents used to pack her for lunch, y'all, I had me one of them hard, y'all know about them hard a, a, a Superman lunch boxes and and and, and 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 what my mama would do, right? She would put she would cut me up like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, and and, and she would put and, and and she would put me, you know, some 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 red Kool Aid. Y'all know red Kool Aid. 
Y'all talking about the good Kool-Aid. I had a thermos because you had a hard thermos. We ain't had them sippy things y'all got now that you poke straws in. No, nah, that was that, 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 that was for rich folks. We, we ain't had that. We had we had 10 cent. You get two packs of Kool-Aid for 10 cent, and you put a half a pack of sugar in there, and then you take a big spoon and you whip it up. And then my mama would take and pour this red syrup into the thermos for lunch. And and I had a certain experience that Peggy was not used to because what Peggy used to have is she would have water. She would have sliced carrots. And she would have something like these we 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 I don't think we could afford Pringle chips, but she had she had some Pringle chips along with her peanut butter sandwich. But in her lunchbox, she didn't have anything that was actually sweet or actually tastes good. See, young people, y'all got to understand something today, that the reason that you're in the house of God today is because for the last 21 days, you've been crying out to God, you've been praising God, you've been worshiping God, you've been making your petitions known to God so that you can have a sweet experience with him today. Is that anybody's request in here today? You, a little bit? He said, nah, that's normally, that's my little pastor. But get this. And in intimate relationships, you, re re you receive a description of your partner that nobody else may know. The word of God says in Daniel 10, 5 and 6, it says, I, talking about Daniel, looked up and there before me was a man dressed in linen with a belt of fine gold from Euphaz around his waist. His body was like topaz, his face like lightning, his eyes like a flaming torch. That he actually had a description of his intimate partner. And, and, and one of the things that I actually love about having a description of your intimate partner is that right now, because, because me in Peggy or Piggy, we begin to get, the, we develop this actual, like this covenant. Because, and, 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 and sometimes y'all, this crazy that I'm 50 years old right now, but I could turn my back right now and actually see this little blonde hair girl walk over to me asking for some cookies. And the reason that I have can give a description of who she is is because during the time that she would walk over to me, we would actually spend time together that nobody else actually spent with us. No, 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 uh-uh. See, see, if you think like that, watch this. You starting to lean to your own understanding. Oh, y'all y'all ain't ready. I could, I could preach whatever y'all toss out today. I've been fasting and praying. I've been with Jesus for the last 21 days. See, when you start thinking, when, when dirty thoughts come to your mind, when you actually start, come on, we was in kindergarten, y'all. What, 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 what y'all thought kindergarten? Kid? We was in the lunchroom in front of her. No, nah, y'all beginning to cross the line. See, because when you start, when your thoughts and your words don't add up to the word of God, you get to step into a place that instead of receiving the promises of God, you're getting ready to receive the punishment of God. Uh, okay. And watch this. So after she would come over, right? Y'all, everything was fine. Everything was cool because Piggy used to come and ask me for my cookies. So I went home one day, right, and I asked my mama, I said, hey, mom. She said, yeah. I said, can I get a couple more cookies in my lunch? She said, boy, uh-uh, you ain't getting all that sugar. You don't need all that sugar. You'll be, you be bouncing around off the walls when you get to school. No, you can't have all that sugar. I was like. 
Ma, I just need some more cookies. What you need some more cookies for? Nothing. So then, y'all, my birthday came. And, you know, mamas come, they show up at school, and, 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 and she bringing some cupcakes for the entire class, right? And, and, and so she brought these cupcakes, right? So, but, 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 but this is the problem. The problem is that Peggy, because she was used to coming over to me, didn't change who she was because she was in the presence of my mama. See, 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 because Peggy said, hey, me and you, we're actually in, in like this committed thing that we got that we normally share food when your mother is not there, that now that you're in the presence of your mama, I'm not going to change who I am in order to please her. And, and, and she continued to walk around the table to talk to me and make request. I don't know who this is for today, but God told me to tell you that it doesn't matter in spite of who you may be in front of. It don't matter in spite of the environment that you might, might be in. That you got to continue to do the same thing that you always did for these last 21 days so that you can continue to have an experience with Jesus. And if you don't, you simply will be. Crossing the line. So you got to continue to pray. You got to continue to seek his face. You got to continue to talk to him. You got to continue to spend time with him. Because that is what God has called for us to do. Amen. Get this. So the reason why I really ain't want my mama to know what was going on is because y'all, it's five of us. I got a twin brother and I got three sisters and my daddy. And, and what happened when, when, when I would go that now that my mother has seen this blonde hair, hair young, cute little girl that was different from me with her hazel brown eyes walk over to me and only me. She went home and she started to talk some different stuff over with my father. And, 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 and what happened was that not only did she tell my daddy, that's cool. We can sit down at the family table. We can eat. We can do whatever. But y'all got to understand, I got four siblings. I got four. Now, anybody got any younger brothers or older brothers and sisters in the house? And, and, and how many of y'all, y'all ever had an experience with them when they was not so nice? So, so here I am in kindergarten. And, 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 and now the slogan, Rodney. Can I have some cookies? Followed me all the way until I got in middle school. That, that every day it seemed like somebody would say something to me in my immediate family that would make me feel a little like, ah, uh, like, ah, uh, yeah, like, like it was just, it was like, well, I mean, it was just like, it was just like, oh, uh, like, 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 how is it that they could say, that, that they keep reminding me and what it was is that having a relationship with Piggy put me in an uncomfortable position. See, for the last 21 days, y'all been out here fasting and praying and, 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 and lifting your hands. How many of y'all, it feels natural to lift your hands? Feels natural, natural. How many of y'all feel like, you know, that when somebody say, hey, lift your hands for Jesus in this place, you kind of half staff, you like, you look... You know that look that you do, you look. And then you kind of, you just, you kind of like you ain't got no deodorant on. You don't, you don't really, you just, you, you, you just kind of just 
Lift your hand. Because worshiping God, you got to understand something. It's not the easiest thing to do. That going forth doing the will of God is not an easy thing to do unless you understand that you have an intimate relationship with God. Until you say, you know what? I don't care what this person say on my right. And I don't care what this person say in my classroom. I don't care what my siblings say. That if I'm in an intimate relationship with God, it is what it is. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to continue to walk. I'm going to continue to follow him. Matter of fact, the word of God declares that, 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 that whether man lose house or brother or sister or whatever he lose, that God will give it back to him in return. Is there anybody that ever been through some stuff in your life that you're saying, God, I'm trusting you that you're going to give that thing back to me? If you are in here today, just scream out, yes. Wait, did y'all say yes? You said yes? Because the promises of God are both yes and amen. <laughs> y'all, I, I ain't even been on no notes today. And it's, I know it's about time for me to, to stop. But we gonna, we gonna, Sade in here? Oh, dang on it. Oh, she said, I don't say she in the spirit. See, it's, 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 we desire, watch this, watch this young people. Most people desire to have the benefits of God, but we don't accept or we reject the boundaries of God. Wait, wait a minute. So we accept that God is my healer. But we reject that I need to live a sacrifice life and not eat everything that come to me and I need to exercise. That we accept that God is my provider. But we reject the boundary that says you have to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all those other things will be added to you. That we accept the presence of God and the power of God, but we reject the notion that we got to come before God and he who comes to God must first believe that he is, that we accept the things that we desire from God, but we reject the standard that it takes in order to receive those things from God. And simply when we do that, we simply cross the line. One of the things that, y'all, I ain't never been no track runner, right? Never. I've been healthy all my life. My brother Frank, he is six foot. He's slim. Don't look at me like that. My mama said, that's my twin brother. I know I'm 5'8 and chunky. Frank is 6'4 and slim. Y'all don't believe my mama. Don't call my mama no lie. Now. Don't, don't, don't call. That's my twin brother. They said they got us in the hospital at the same time, so that's my twin brother, right? But, but it's something that y'all got to understand that, that, that with me and Frank even being... Uh, uh, brothers that that sometimes everything that you come from don't look like what it seems. Sometimes trusting God, y'all, it don't seem, it don't look like it seems. Sometimes being in the presence of God, it don't look like it seem, but you need to learn that you just need to stay there long enough until God actually move and do the thing that you're asking for him to do. Now, can I get into the text? Because in the Bible, when you read the story in Daniel 10, you got to understand something. Daniel is actually a prisoner of war, right? And when he actually, when he first got captured, he was between the age of 17 and 18, right? He was a young man, right? That's, that's still young, right? That's young? Yeah, say he's 17, 18. In Daniel 10, 
Some theologians believe that he's about 84 to 85 years old. Now, y'all got, y'all got to get this. That he got captured when he was 18. But now, he's in his 80s. And, 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 and I began to say, like, God, what, 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 what is this? What is this? Because if you was actually waiting on God to answer a prayer for around 65 years or more, I don't know about you, but I would begin to doubt whether or not God was actually going to do the thing that he said he was going to do. I don't know that it's, 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 it's sometimes it's hard for me, that, and maybe I'm here by myself, that, that once, when, 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 when I trust God for a year, I'm good. That when I trust God for a month, I'm even better. That when I trust God and he do it in a day, I'm, 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 I'm rejoicing and flipping and doing cockwheels. But, but, but when I got to trust God for a thing for more than five years, Something happens to me that I begin to lean to my own understanding. That something happens to me that I no longer want to wait on the Lord. But I want to begin to do something with my hands and make it happen for myself. That, 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 that when I have to wait, that, that when I have to wait on God, that, that, that when I have to wait and it seems like it's taking God too long, that it seems like it's taking God too long to heal my grandmother and it seems like it's taking God too long to bring me the promotion on the job and it seems like it's taking God too long to bring me a, a, a significant other, that it, I begin to try to do something in my own strength. Because I remember when I was 15 years old, my father died for cancer and I was praying for him. <clears throat> and I remember that because I had, I had trusted God, I had read his word, I, had, I, 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 I believed him, I was in his presence, and I was crying out to God daily for my father. But my father, he still died. That was at age 15. See, but by the age of 17, 18, I was a drug dealer. See, because my father had his own construction company. And I knew that I used to go every summer and work for my father. And I knew in my heart that my father was going to let me take over that company. I knew without a doubt that, that because of the company that my father had, that God was, I, I, I was going to be blessed. And he used to show me mounds of money. He'd get paid and he would show me big stacks of money and say, hey, son, go hide this. And I knew that I was going to be financially able and blessed and, and, and that all my needs was going to be met because I was going to do the same thing that my daddy did in order to get these finances. And, and, and he died when I was 15. And I began to doubt where I thought the promise of God for my life was. And I began to lean See, because I got tired of believing what God was going to do. Or have you ever been tired of hearing stories and saying, you know what, I'm just tired of the thing that I feel I've been trusting God for. I'm just ready to give up on this dream. Because what you do is you try to do things in your own strength during those times. And you begin to lean outside the borders and the boundaries of God like I did. So because of that, I became a kingpin drug dealer. Yep, I know y'all can't believe it. Pastor Rodney, he was a drug dealer. But get this, let me identify these lines and then I'm going to pray for y'all. Psalms 
See, because the two lines that you got to stay within all the time, watch this, is the line of God's word and the line of God's obedience. Hear me, young people. That you're actually looking and you're expecting the promises of God. But you got, and you want this intimate relationship with God. But you got to stay within the defined line of God's word. Let me read a scripture to you. And it says this. In Deuteronomy 4 and 2, it says, Do not add to what I command you and do not subtract from it. But keep the commands of the Lord your God that I give you. Watch this. Revelations 22, 18 and 19 says this. He says, I warn you. Listen, listen to what God says about his word and how serious he is about his word. He says, I warn you. Everyone who hears the word of the prophecy of the scroll, if anyone adds anything to them, God will add to that person the plagues described in the scroll. And if anyone takes away from this scroll of prophecy, God will take away from that person any share in the tree of life and in the holy city which are described in the scroll. That God is saying that I will, I'm telling you that the defines of my word, that you got to follow it, that don't take away from it, don't add to it. And if you add or take away from my word, then I will actually add or take away from your life. Watch this. Maybe God didn't hear the prayers that I sent up to my father to heal him. Simply because my father had added or took away from his word. Don't cross the line. Watch this. The next line is the line of obedience to God's will. So you got the line of God's word and then you got the line of God, of your obedience to God's word. That you got the line of God's word, and then you got the line of obedience to God's word. Listen to what it says. It says this in John 5, verses 2 and 3. This is how we know that we love the children of God. By loving God and carrying out his commands. In fact, this is love of God. To keep his commands, and his commands are not burdensome. So, w w wait a minute. Obeying God, he just said in his word, is not burdensome. That it doesn't wear you down, that it doesn't pull you down. That obeying him is actually a blessing. But what it is, is that when we get so entangled with the world, when we get so entangled with people uh, 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 that we care about what they feel or what they say, it feels like it's a burden to actually carry out the simple command of God. Watch this. Leviticus 26, 14 and 17 says this. But if you do not obey me and do not carry out all these commands, if instead you reject my statutes and if your soul abhors my order ordinances so as not to carry out all my commandments and so to break my covenant, I, watch this, watch what God going to do. He says, I, in turn, will do this to you. I will appoint over you a sudden terror, consumption, and fever that will waste away the eyes and cause the soul to pine away. Also, you will so see useless, for your enemies will eat it up. That line of obedience. You can't cross over it. 
the line of God's word. You can't cross over it. See, because when you cross over it, God says that you're either going to receive the promise or the punishment. But watch this. Inside the confined lines of God's word and your obedience to God is an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. <laughs> Wait a minute. That this intimate relationship with Jesus, the Bible says that eyes haven't seen nor ears heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man what God has in store for those who love him. That is inside the confinement of those two lines so that when you run your race, you don't go over and become, watch this, a distraction or a hindrance for somebody else. Because if you become a distraction or a hindrance to somebody else, what happens is you, did, you get disqualified and you can't receive the promise that you're supposed to get because of you running that race. Now, how many of y'all want to run a race that you pretty much cannot win? Is there anybody? But you want your prize, right? You want your prize. You, you, you put the sacrifice in. You put the time in. You want, your, you want your prize, right? You want your prize? Cool. Me too. So don't cross the lines. Y'all, I wish I could. I had, uh, I'm going to pray for y'all. I wish I had um, Piggy's phone number. Because I would tell her, oh, look, y'all, my wife said, hmm. She said, like, she's hmm. Hey, 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 she said, hmm. No, uh, 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 Piggy might be a little lighter than her, but, but, but my wife close. She close. She close. She close. She close. <laughs> y'all get this. Y'all, I think my wife's going to be preaching up here. Um, Sometimes, so I know she's gonna get me with one of those stories uh, about me. So pay, payday is coming. She just gotta be patient. God will revenge. God will will revenge. Hey, but I want to pray for some people today. That you say, you know what, Pastor Rodney? I would follow God's word, but I just seem like I don't have enough time to study it. And it seems like every single time that you get ready to study God's word or to do something on behalf of God, it seems like a distraction comes. This is my whole purpose of being here right here, right this moment. Because I feel the presence of God. <coughs> And there's some more of you in here today that you said, you know what, I, I, you know, I, I, I understand what the word is saying. I, I understand what the Bible is saying. I, I, I get that. Pastor Rodney, bro, I get that, bro. I get that. But you got to understand something that the environment that I'm in at school is kind of hard to obey, even though I know what, what God's word says and and. I, I, I don't want to displease God, but it's a little difficult when I get in certain environments. And, and because of how the, the environment is, it seems that it will be easy if I just cross over the line and then I cross back over once I get into a different environment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That you say, you know what, in church it seems like it's so easy to run this race. But when I get outside the church, sometimes it's just some words might come up out of my mouth that shouldn't come up out of there. But it seems like it's easy in church, but it's difficult when I'm outside the church. And I hear the Lord saying that today he's going to anoint you in a special way to give you the strength and the ability to be able to do what you could not do on your own. How could I say that? 
simply because Daniel was placed in a lion's den. And when he was up in the lion's den, the word of God says that God sent angels to close the mouths of the lions. You said, you know what, Pastor Rodney, somebody, some, somebody already didn't pray for me this before. And I've been waiting on God too long. And right now, I'm just ready to give up. I just want to pray for your strength today. But you need to understand something. The anointing and word of God is not like a carton of milk. It doesn't have an expiration date on it. That just because you've been waiting, it don't mean that it's spoiled. That just because you've been waiting, it does not mean that it's going to get the, the dream that God has given you has been thrown in the trash. So right now, with every eye closed and every head bowed, if you're in this place today and you say, you know what, I need, I need to have a more understanding of God's word. Or you're saying, you know what, I need the boldness to be able to follow his word when I get in certain environments. If that is you in this place today, on the count of three, I want you to stand to your feet. Some of y'all, even when I said that, I sense that fear hit you. I bind fear right now in Jesus' name. I come against it right now in the name of Jesus. If that is you that you said, I need a more uh, clearer understanding of God's word, and I need the strength to be able to obey and carry out that word. If that is you in this place today, on the count of three, I just simply want you to stand to your feet. One. Two. Three. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up. I'm about to end. Stand up. It's not too late. If that's you, stand up. God is going to do something. If that's you, stand up, stand up. I don't even care if you a leader. Stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up. Because these struggles that we face, they're not just for these young people. The word of God is for, the, is, is for everybody. It's, it's, it's stand up. Lift your hands to the Lord. Lift your hands as a sign of surrender. So, Father. Father, right now, in Jesus' name, according to your will, Father, we don't want to cross these lines, the lines of your word or the line of obeying your word because we want to run this race to the fullest. So, God, right now, I pray and ask in the name of Jesus, God, that, Father, that you would release unto us all, God, a new anointing, God, to be able to study your word, read your word, and follow your word. Help us, Lord God, to obey, even in hard environments, even when we're not in church, even when we're at work, even, Lord God, when we're out with our friends, God. Help us to have a hunger and a desire to follow you and understand that the promises of God does not expire, but that you, God, are going to do great things in and through our lives. And for that, we give you praise. In Jesus' name. Come on, clap your hands to the Lord. Wait just one second. When I was praying, I heard God say this. Some of y'all need to repent. Because when you know the right thing to do, but you made a conscious decision to still do the wrong thing that puts you in a place to be an enemy with God. So I'm asking you right now, 
if you're under the sound of my voice and you know that you have consciously, you have consciously knew that you was making or doing the wrong thing, but instead of following God's word, you continue to do that wrong thing anyway. I just want you, not, not, not with me, everybody, everybody close their eyes and start praying. But get that thing right with God right now. Don't leave. Do not leave and not get that thing right with God. Don't leave. Talk to him. Talk to him. Tell him. Tell him. Tell him. You know, this week, I, I, let me confess my sins. This week, for some reason, I've been praying with people for that, 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 that smoke cigarettes. I mean, God been having me do stupid stuff. I mean, crazy stuff that, that just jump out the truck and go witness or go speak to somebody uh, uh, about cigarettes and talk to him. But my mother died from smoking a cigarette from asthma. My mother didn't make it to 50. So I done, I done surpassed her. So if you need to get that thing right with God, get it right with God. Get it right with God. Get it right with God. Talk to God. Talk to God. Talk to God. Tell him. Tell him about it. Tell him about it. Father. As a sign of obedience, Lord God, to you, let them sense the weight of your presence throughout their day at home, when they're in the car. Let their eyes see the presence of God like never before. Let them feel light. Let them feel love. And thank you, God, that when we confess our sins, you're faithful to forgive us, Lord. We thank you for it now in Jesus' name. Amen.